Beginning at verse 1, it, it reads, uh, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Jonah, arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa. And he found his ship going to Tarshish, so he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Our subject for today is Gone AWOL. Mm -hmm. Gone AWOL. Now, I don't know if everybody, I would assume that everybody has heard of AWOL before, but I'm not gonna, um, I'm gonna explain it anyway. AWOL happens to be uh, an acronym of the military, which means absent without leave. Absent without leave. So it means, and it basically means that if you are not at your post, then you are AWOL. You are absent without leave. So now we're, we're becoming very uh, familiar with Jonah. Like I said, God keeps bringing me back to Jonah and giving me different uh, titles and lessons and seeing diff showing me different lessons inside of these same scriptures. Okay? So, you know, we know that pretty much what's going on with Jonah and Jonah is the, the ultimate story of disobedience. And and he's the most famous thing about Jonah is what? That he was wet for three days and three nights. And the belly of the fish, three days and three nights. And that's also a type for Christ. Because he said just as Jonah was three days and three nights inside the, the belly of the fish, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth. Three days and three nights. And that was a type for Christ. Okay, so the thing is, uh, I'm going to help you identify God's plan for your life. I'm going to help you identify if you have gone AWOL, if you are absent without leave. Now, the first thing is, our first point is, if you are out of position, if you are out of position, now watch this, let's, let's go back to these scriptures, right? Verse one says, now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Jonah, arise, and then he was specific, right? Go to Nineveh, that great city. So he told him to what? Go to Nineveh, right? But well, watch what Jonah did. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, right? And went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he, could, so he paid the fare thereof. And went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish. What? From the presence of the Lord. So let me explain something real quick. Anytime you are not in the presence of the Lord, you are going to be out of position. Do y'all understand that? Anytime you are out of the, the, the presence of the Lord, you are going to be out of position. Position because God and, and then the, the thing about the word of God is people use excuses. How do I know? How, how do I know this and that? Okay, how do we find that out? How how do we know what God's plan for your life is? Does anybody know? By his word. By his word. What what you saying, Darius? Oh. 
to read about him. You got to study the word because in order, if he is your creator, then you have to know that if he created you, then he created you for a purpose. There has to be something specific that you were created for. And we understand all the time it says that each of us is what? Unique. There are no people that are alike. We may have some of the same ways, things like that. But there are no people that are alike. We are unique, just like our fingerprints. Unique. So we need to find out what did the creator create me for? What is my unique purpose? What is my calling that he has created me for? What has he called me to do? So if you are out of position, if you are out of area, if you are anywhere except where you're supposed to be, you are out of position. Do y'all understand that? And, and where was Jonah supposed to be at? He was supposed to be gone to Nineveh. But where did he go? To Joppa. Hmm. 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 That's 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 real cut and dry, right? It's real cut and dry. And and, and see in the church today, this this is what's amazing. So many of us, guess what? We either have not recognized what God has told us to do, or what? Like Jonah, we going where we want to go. So you know what? You know what? That's the equivalent of that's the equivalent of people in the church that uh, I'm tired of so and so singing all the time. I want to sing. Can't sing, but that's what you want to do. Y'all understand that? And see, this is this is a part of if we magnify this, this this is a part of being uh, covetous, right? When we try to do, we want somebody else's calling, or we like the way they speak, we like what they do. I, I want to do that. I want to be like so and so. Oh, you know what? I, I want. I like that experience, mm -hmm. but you are out of position. Mm -hmm. Understand that? Okay. The second point is, how do you know if you are a wall? If you're out of position, you're gonna be what? Off task. Huh? If you are out of position, then you're gonna be off task. Hmm. Watch this. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, not just arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, because it had two parts. Arise, go to Nineveh, and what? When you get there, here's your assignment. Cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. Right? Specific. Go to Nineveh, then when you get to Nineveh, here's your purpose for being in Nineveh. You're going to cry against that city because of their wickedness. But once again, Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. See that? Went down to Joppa and he found the ship going to Tarshish. So he could, so he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. So he's not even trying to do what God told him to do. Because what? Let's 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 magnify what he's going to do when he get to uh to Joppa. Huh? What is he going to do? When God told him to arise, he rose up to flee. That's right. You cannot, it's futile. You cannot flee. That's I mean, you can do it, but it's not from the presence of the Lord. You know where he is, but he's hmm. not with you. Hmm. So, and, and the, the amazing thing about this, it's like God, God woke him up and said, okay, arise, go to Nineveh. Got something for you. And Jonah was like, Ooh, thank you for waking me up. I want to I'm going this way. You see? Y'all see that? That's what he did. So right now, out of area, he in the wrong place, and he's doing the wrong thing. All right, there, there's, there's going to be some consequences. Going to be some consequences. Um, God was crazy. God said, go to Nineveh, that great city. <laughs> then he said, for their wickedness has come up before me. You see, God called that city what it was going to be. Mm -hmm. you see, and Jonah knew what it was, what state it was in then. But see, here's the thing. Here's what Jonah knew. See, because there's something else connected to that. Me too, and I, huh? Well, Jonah was, like what you're saying, just dismissive of God, like, mm -hmm, woke me up, and I'm going the other way. You know, I don't like them anyway. 
And that's that's exactly correct because guess what? The Ninevites was terrorizing the children of Israel. Yeah, I think so. And Jonah knew that. Jonah was like, hmm, man, arise, you tripping. In that arise, God was empowering him. Huh. Jonah was at a position, like what you're saying, he was at a position where no, not without my presence, yeah, hmm. they're going to trample you. But you are going in my power. So, and see, let me, let me say something. Let me say, let me say something real quick before Solana, before I come to you. Because here's the thing: whenever God calls you for a purpose, He sends you on an assignment. Guess what? You know what the amazing thing about that? You're already equipped to be successful, mm -hmm. right? But here's what happened: us, we get in the way and we start weighing the possibilities. We talk, we start being pessimistic. Right? Oh, they they killing they killing folk, man. I, I've seen they work. I don't know about this. Are you sure, God? Matter of fact, you know what? I don't even know if you sure, God. You know what? I'm going to Joppa. Mm -hmm. Man, you tripping? That's right. I'm, I'm going somewhere else. What, what were you about to say, Solana? Um, Jonah remind me of Ananias. Hmm. When the Lord told Ananias to go to Saul, pa yeah. What? But Ananias stood his ground and he questioned the Lord. Do you know this, Saul? When Jonah rang, he asked no questions. He didn't say. Mm -hmm. That was the only difference. You know, Jonah should have did as Ananias. Mm -hmm. Stand your ground and ask the Lord. Say, Lord, you call this a great city, but this is a wicked place, just like Ananias did. Ananias went forward and looked. Paul became a mighty man because we don't see. The Lord say, um... His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. We don't see what the Lord mm -hmm. has. Right. And, and see, the, 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 the amazing thing between Ananias and, and Jonah is, like you said, Ananias stood there and say, are you sure, God? Listen, let me tell you what this man, jo what Jonah basically said, you don't know what you're talking about. You tripping. I ain't going now. I'm going somewhere else. You see? You understand that? So when you are off task, you, that means that what? You are not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Y'all understand that? When you're off task, that means that you are not doing what you're supposed to be doing. I know um, I know. We're in my teacher training, that was a big thing, you know, getting the kids to stay on task. Getting them to stay on task. Stay on task. Have to keep redirecting them. Get back on task. So when you are not doing what you're supposed to do. Hmm. When you're not doing what you're supposed to do. The third point in me helping you understand if you are a wall is this is a FYI for you. This is a FYI. Your circumstances have no bearing on your assignment. Your circumstances have no Bearing on your assignment. What is your circumstance? Things that's going on in your life. Has no bearing on your assignment. Watch this. His, okay, watch this. Verse 4 says, But Jonah, but the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid, and they cried unto every man unto his God. Right, and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten them. But Jonah was going down into the sides of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. Right, and then we know that they went and, and got Jonah. Say, hey, wake up! What are you doing? We're about to die, and you sleeping? We're about to die, and you're sleeping. You need to get up and pray. Call on on your God. Verse fifteen. So they took Jonah because what happened is they found out that everything that was happening to them was what? Because of Jonah. Right? Everything that was happening to them was because of Jonah. Matter of fact, let's go to um, verse 11. Verse 11 said, they said unto him, what shall we do unto thee? After they found out it was him. The reason, because they cast lots, right? And we know the reason why they cast lots is because what? Because they did not have the spirit of God, so they cast lots to find out, you know, who, who's, for whose fault this sea was, was temptuous. Mm -hmm. Right? Verse 11, they said unto him, Jonah, 
What shall we do unto thee that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea wrought and was tempestuous. Tempestuous. All right? And he said unto them, 12, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea, so shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Drop down to 15, so okay, yep, that's what we're going to do. So they took Joan up and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. Now the Lord prepared, when we drop down to 17, it ain't over for Jonah. Mm -hmm. It ain't over for him. After now, they done throw him in the sea. He's in the midst of the storm. It seemed like his situation is getting worse, right? Mm -hmm. In the midst of the storm, now you're in the sea. Now, 17, now the Lord prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. And real quick, we, um, it, it, the Bible says fish. And I know we, we, we always say well, but the Bible says fish. And we have to be careful when we, when we start adding certain things, um, interpreting it. So, Jonah, what, 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 what am I saying? I'm saying that your circumstances have no bearing on your, on your, on your assignment, right? Because now here's the thing. There are two things that your circumstances can be the result of. One, they could be the result of you being disobedient. Mm -hmm. And your circumstances could be the result of life. Mm -hmm. You understand that? Because life happens to everyone. Right? Life happens to everyone. And serving God does not grant you any privileges. Does not make you immune to what what life has the the, the things that that life presents but the bible lets us know that what guess what there's no um circumstance that can overtake you right he's provided a way of escape for you right so no matter what it is you're going to be all right go ahead uh Teresa. i don't know if you pointed this out the last time you went on drama but when the um, other men were praying you know and touching on what someone just said earlier that we have disciplines that God has given us where we can move his hand, he can listen to us, we can not change his mind, but we can, you know, conversate and have a relationship with him. When they pray, Lord, well, they pray to his God. They believed in his God. Mm -hmm. Because he was being disobedient, he was sleeping. Mm. You know, right. If he, he was off task, if he was on his way to Nineveh, Jonah, I believe, would have been up would have been on task, thinking about Ready. Nineveh. God Think, would have been talking to him. God, prepare what I'm about to say. He knew that even sleeping, he knew, well, the God has sent this tempt this, you know, he's controlling the sea and it's all about me. God, um, Jonah would have knew the same thing going on if anything was happening. He would have been praying for those, for the safety of the men on the ship, knowing that this is a sacred, you know, trip to go to Nineveh. So it's like what he's saying, it's disobedience or it's just life. Hmm. Well, and let, let me add something right quick. The fact that Jonah was asleep. The fact that Jonah was asleep. Let, let, me, let me show you this. It shows that, guess what? We can be so disobedient to, and, so, and get caught up in what we're doing and ignoring God that, guess what? We try to rest in our decision. We'll try to rest in our fine peace and rest. We'll fool ourselves. Because understand this. How is it that everybody is afraid on this ship except Jonah? Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? That everybody is trying to figure out what they do. Everybody praying except Jonah. He done told himself because, see, that's the power of the mind. The mind, whatever you put in your mind, that's what you're going to believe. So Jonah done put in his mind that what? I'm safe. Everything is all right. Yeah, because he's out the presence of God, so hmm. he felt he found safety. He thought he could run and get away. He thought that he had really ran from the presence of God in his mind. Y'all understand that? In his mind. Now watch this. Let's 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 keep on going. So I'm I'm saying that my third point is your circumstances your circumstances have no bearing on your assignment. And I say this is just a, a FYI for you because when we go to chapter three, watch this. And the word of God came unto Jonah a second time. Right, saying, arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it 
the preaching that I bid thee. Because remember, what changed from, from, from chapter 3 from chapter 1? What changed? Not a thing. God told him the same thing. Now, now, now Jonah, you, we, I, don't, I was just in the sea. Then, you know, they threw me over into the, to the, to the, I was in a storm first. Then they threw me over into the sea. I was in a well. I was in a fish for three days and three nights. Mm -hmm. And what did God say? Lord. Arise, Jonah, and go to Nineveh. So God is not concerned with your circumstances. Not at all. What is God concerned with? His, His will. His will be done. I told you to do this. That's why with Ananias, and Ananias said, hey, you know, man, Paul killing Christians. I need you to welcome him. I have something for him. Yeah, but wait, you hear what I said? I said that, you know, you know, so-and-so in them, he killed them. He, he was right there. Yeah, he, he, he was right there. Guys, go. I have something for him. Your feelings, your emotions, your circumstances, your situation has nothing to do with God. All they do is hinder you from being obedient to God. Because you know what you start doing? You start to, you try to use that for an excuse why I cannot or why I should not do what you're saying. Because, hold on, right now, hold on, I'm, 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 I'm busy. That's what you're telling God, I'm busy, hold on. I got some things I got to do. Let me, I got to take care of my business. And I just say, you don't have any business. You, got, you have to take care of my business. You see? So, so after Jonah went through all of this, God came right back to him and told him the same thing. Y'all understanding this? Now, here's the final point. If you are a wall. Repent. Repent. Watch what happened in Jonah 2. Jonah 2, okay, this was after he um um after he was in the in the in the fish's belly. Verse 1 says, Then Jonah prayed unto God, the Lord his God, out of the fish's belly. While he was in there, he what? He repented while he was in there. Hmm. See that? Because understand that even when they, they were praying, Jonah didn't pray. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Jonah didn't pray when, when he was in the midst of the storm. Didn't pray. When they threw him in the sea, he still didn't pray. It wasn't until he got in his last situation that he began to pray and said, I cried by reason of mine infliction unto the Lord, and he heard me out of the belly of of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. For thou hast cast me into the deep, into the midst of the seas, and floods compassed me about. All thy billows and all thy waves passed over me. Right? Then I said, I am cast, I am cast out of thy sight. Yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. So he, he started to repent. You know what? All of this, that didn't happen, you know, I, I, I guess he said, you know, I might as well do what God says to do. All of this is happening to me. Not, this has nothing to do with life. This is because of, of disobedience. These things are happening to him. You understand that? So you know what? I might as well do what, what the Lord says to do. You, you was about to say something? Go ahead. He thought that was going to be his way out. He hmm. saw the Lord had prepared a fish. So I can't get away from him. So I might as well just go ahead and repent right. because the word is not going to return to him. Well, he said go. And, and he meant Jonah was going to go on. You know what I mean? And, and that's the thing. You can't, the thing is, you can't escape the presence of God because God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. So where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? If Jonah wasn't, I mean, he's still. What, he would have died in a belly of the fish. Hmm. I mean, yeah. that's right. But see, you know what? What Jonah realized, see, because like I said, he was afraid of the Ninevites, right? But now, you know what? I mean, I'd rather, 
hey, I, I might as well just do what God says do. Because the thing is, he knows who God is. Mm -hmm. So that means that if he knows who God is, he know what God can do, what he, what all the, 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 the victories that God has won. He know all of these things. He knows about the wrath of God. You see, all of these things he knows. Go ahead. Maybe this was God's way of testing Jonah as well. Um, because, yeah, he was afraid of the Ninevites, but maybe Jonah didn't realize what God can do until after God did all those things. I don't, but, but here's, here's the thing. It wasn't, it wasn't a test for Jonah. Okay. You see, because what's the purpose of a test? A test is for you to prove, so, right? Yeah. You know, it was nothing for Jonah to prove here. You see what I'm saying? Nothing for him to prove because God was specific and direct to him. Hey, listen, hey, right. hey, man of God, look, I need you to go over there to this city and, 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 and preach to them because they, hey, it's getting out of hand. That's it. That's what it is. That, that's it. That's right. That's right. Because, uh, and we understand this about, 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 um, about Israel. That's what Israel was very disobedient. Israel was always in something that they shouldn't have been doing. Right? God had to punish them, put them back on track. Punish them, put them back on track. And this is the same thing that's happening to Jonah. It's a, I, I think it's a, a, it's a demonstration of God's authority. You see? It's a demonstration of God's authority, and, and it's letting you know that, guess what? You will do what he said. Because Jonah did everything that he could to do the opposite of what God said, right? By fleeing, by then when he was in the storm, he got thrown over into the sea, and he ended up in the fish's belly. And guess what? He still was not consumed. He was not destroyed. Because what? God said, go to Nineveh. And guess what? He was going to go to Nineveh. Now, all this extra stuff, you brought on yourself. But when you get through, when I get through whipping you into shape, guess what? I'm not going to be like, okay, well, listen, now, you know what? Too late now. You don't waste all of these days and, you know, you're wet. You know what I'm saying? You smell like throw up. No. Now go and do what I said do. But you're going to do what he said do. You understand that? So and, and when we drop down to verse 10, verse 10 lets us know that, uh, and, and, and the Lord spake unto the fish, and he vomited out Jonah upon dry land. So isn't that amazing? That he was vomited out on dry land? Anybody see anything amazing about that? That the fish, the sea, went and Put him where he needed to be. He the Lord. Put him back on track. Mm -hmm. The fish was in position. Yes. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> so so what, what does that mean? Even in your disobedience, there's something else or somebody else in position that's going to be part of God correcting you. Mm -hmm. And their purpose is to be there for that reason. Yes. Mm -hmm. To get you back where you need to be. Or get you back on track so you can get to where you need to be. Now, let me, let me tell you this. So here's the thing. In the military, when we go back to our military, because we're talking about AWOL, right? In the military, anytime you do not have permission to be somewhere else, you're absent without leave. That's what I said, right? So anytime you are not at your duty station, you are considered a wall. I'm gonna say that again. Anytime you are not at your duty station, you are considered a wall. Anytime you are not at your duty station, you are considered a wall. That means what? Your duty station is your duty, and it is your place. This is the place where you need to be, and there's a job that you need to be doing while you're in this specific place. What's the significance of that? There are people that are dependent on you being where you need to be. You understand that? Because here's the thing. The, the military is all about, okay, the military is all about security, right? So at all times, the country, the forts, the base, everything needs to be secured 24 hours a day. At any time you drop the ball, 
there is a breach of security. Y'all understand that? So if you are supposed to be guarding something, you're not guarding what you're supposed to be. If you are asleep or whatever, then there's a chance that you make everybody um, is, is, is vulnerable to attack and capture, to defeat. All because you went to sleep or you didn't do what you're supposed to do. That's why it's so important. Now, here's the thing about God. Let's tie that into God. God is all about his will. We have a, the Great Commission, with, which is to go um, and teach the gospel, right? Bring men to Christ, right? Teach them all, all things that you have observed, right? So here's the thing. There are people whose lives is at stake. Your job, okay, understand this. Your job, 24 hours a day, you are who? A child of God. You represent Christ 24 hours a day. It, it's not a Sunday thing. When If you come here today, then I'm going to say a prayer for you and I'm going to bless you. I'm going to give you a blessed day. But tomorrow, I'm off. Tuesday, don't call me. You know, hey, look, you can't call me on Tuesdays because on Tuesdays I'll be playing basketball. No. Every day, all day. You know why? Because... When we go to 1 Corinthians 6 and 19, 1 Corinthians 6 and 19 says, it says, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God. So your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. It's inside of you. You have that of God. So that means that what? And ye are not your own. You don't belong to you. For ye are bought with the price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. So everything that you are is of God. So guess what? When I own you, understand this, when I own you, whatever I say do, you're indebted to me. Whatever I say do, that's what you do. You know why? Because I own you. You don't have the right to say no. And it, just in case you say no, guess what? I got something for you for saying no. Because now I got to set an example of you. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. There are consequences for being disobedient. And disobedience does not, being disobedient does not change your assignment. Please understand that. So if you decide you're going to do something other than God, what God says to do, it does not change what God told you to do. Now what you do is you open yourself up so some things happening to you. Now there's going to be some pain. There may be some loss involved. Definitely going to be a loss of time. Jonah lost some, some money too. You see? He lost time, money, safety. All of that. And guess what? I'm quite sure Jonah was afraid. You know, he, he was definitely afraid. He was in a position where, guess what? He had no choice. <laughs> they knew it was him. And I mean, hey... Throw me overboard. All right, no, no, no. We, we, we're not going to throw you overboard. Come on, man. We're going to try to get you back to land. Say, uh-uh, you know what? Throw him overboard. So it's getting worse for this clown. Well, like now you in the sea. One thing about it, Jonah was um, cut from a different cloak because 2017, Jonah would have been like, oh, let's go. On. That's right. Going to it ain't me. This ship going, going the ship going down. I paid my way. They, they might have threw me overboard, but I was going to take a piece of the side with me. So there's going to still sink. I'd have been floating like on Titanic. I had a little piece of wood holding on to a kicking. You see? And, but Jonah knew. He knew. And like say, God said, okay, all right. First of all, the ship. I'm, okay, we gonna, this thing has stages. Let me send. Let me send the storm at first. And he understood the the laws and the statutes. He understood the ways of God. He knew when a man was disobedient, he had to answer for his disobedience. Mm, that's right. So that's why he told him, "Just throw me over." That's right. That's right. Because he knew that. Because once again, he know who God is. Mm -hmm. You know the the other men they didn't know, so that's why they was trying to. Nah, we we get you back to land. Mm -hmm. You know you did pay for this, so we ain't we ain't, we ain't gonna just throw you out here like this. Mm -hmm. right, but but he knew better. But even in Jonah's disobedience, all that that he caused, you know, on the men, guess what? He the, the men were converted. 
even in the midst of all of that chaos, they understood that the God that you serve has to be God. I've been praying to this, this, this dude over here, and I mean, ain't nothing happened. But the minute I prayed and we got prayed to your God and got rid of you, every, this just ceased? Oh, that had to be mind-boggling. And guess what? That had to be a, 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 um, a, a very talkative trip to Joppa. Imagine they saw Joppa the next day. <laughs> I mean, while well, over three days, <laughs> they saw on land. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Wow. Yeah. Didn't we? Didn't we just saw you all over? What happened? Has to be. Man, they got a dude just like you, man, that died in the sea uh, about four days ago. Like, no, man, man, ain't, you, you ain't gonna believe this. That's probably how the story is going. You ain't gonna believe this. And a fish, right? This big fish, like, so I'm. Peace. We're about to leave this, huh? <laughs> All right. Okay. So you, you have to understand what's going on. And, and, and getting back to what I was saying, mm -hmm. the thing is, we have to be accountable to God. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a purpose, everybody has a mission. Right. And the reason why we have to be successful in what we're doing, because there are people connected to us. And one of the worst things that we could do is fail God when it's time to represent him. You see, and one of the worst thing is for God that because here's the thing about God. He is just. Right. He loves his people. But guess what? He has no problem correcting you if you step out of line. You step out of line. OK. It wasn't God that did it. You did it. God lets you know that, hey, that's what you chose to do. God didn't do all of this, the storm, all of that. Yeah, he was behind it. But guess what? This was because of Jonah. Because God needed, because understand it. What are y'all doing back there? Stop. Because here's the thing. What they knew is God knew that, guess what? Once again, in the Old Testament, he only spoke through his prophets. His prophets. Right? At the time, who was the prophet? Jonah. So if Jonah don't go, who's going to go? Who's going to go and speak on the Lord's behalf? See how important this is? This whole city being saved is dependent on Jonah. And, 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 and just to give you what happened in the story, guess what? When Jonah, the, the thing is, like I said, Jonah was afraid of, of the Ninevites, right? That was one. The other thing is, when God began to, to, to change the people, the, the Ninevites, Jonah was upset because in Jonah's mind, they didn't deserve it. Mm -hmm. they, didn't deserve, they didn't deserve for God to help them. Because, Jonah, because once again, through our emotions, after all they did to our people, trying to let them go down. And see, this is why even when we go back to what we were talking about last time about our, 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 uh, our enemies, we can get caught up. Guess what? I, I don't think my enemy deserved to deserve salvation. I don't think they deserve to be saved. I don't think they deserve God's grace. Because you know what? Because I'm mad at them. I'm not over what they did. I'm not praying for them. But here's what happens. When we, when we do not uh, pray for our enemy when we hate our enemy it starts to affect us our heart your heart begins to be hardened because the only way that you can receive forgiveness is to what to forgive so if I can't forgive my enemy then guess what I can't receive what God has for me that's gonna block me from receiving what I need from God and there are no excuses I can't say, well, God, he killed my, my, my family member. He did something. You know what he told me? that He talked about me. He said this and that. He drugged my name, blah, blah, blah. But stop. Your life is not your own. See how simple it is? It's not your own. It's not. I don't care about what, what you feel. Because I, you're indebted to me. I own you. It doesn't matter what you think. You don't have any rights anymore. Your right is only what I say do. And God is good. God is just. And he's God over everything, over creation. 
So if he has a plan for your enemy, he know why he has a plan for your enemy. Your vision is limited. Even when the Bible said we, 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 we prophesy in part, guess what? God may give us pieces of it. We don't have the whole thing. But the piece that he gave us, okay, that's what we have to roll on. That's what we have to go on. And we have to be obedient and guess what? Know that, hey, listen, because there's been times God has told me certain things. And I say, hey, listen, here's what God told me, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what it means, but I know that you know what it means. You see, and that's how we have to understand God, because a lot, see, we, we have to. What well, I think another thing that God knows is we can't we have to remove us out of it, because if I know the whole story, then I may begin to, you know, manipulate some things, try to rearrange some things. So guess what? Let me I don't even want you to be in that position. Mm -hmm. So, you know what? I'm going to give you a piece of it and you just go say this. I don't want you to start thinking about it. I don't want you to be over analytical about what I have called you to do or what I have for them. You see, because like I said, being covetous is a part of us. Yes. Oh, here I am. I'm, I'm, I'm walking. I'm on the bus. And, and God, you telling me to go tell them that they're, they, they, they about to get a Bentley blessing. Hmm. I want a Bentley. You see how that works? So the thing is, we, when, we, when we get back into our lesson, the question is, are you absent without leave? Okay, and the thing is, if you are, if you are out of error, out, out of error, you are out of position, then therefore you are off task. Okay? And if you are out of area, you are off task, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Okay? That means you're being disobedient. When you're being disobedient, then there are going to be circumstances that are going to be connected to it, right? Different circumstances, um, what, disciplinary actions are connected to it when you're being disobedient to God. And God has no problem whipping you back to where you need to be because you chose it. He's a just God. And it, the thing about God is whatever I say, that's what it is. Like we do our kids, shut up and do what I say do. Yeah, but I don't, like I was telling Solana, we grew up, we ain't had no wants. You ain't got no wants. You see? Now, the thing is, with, with, even with our children, with God, like Ananias, you can say, hey, God, listen. Well, what about this? What about this? And guess what? God will give it to you. You may not always like the answer. You may not like the way it comes, but guess what? He'll give it to you. Because God knows who you are. When Thomas said, I ain't going to believe it, Lest I see it. Mm -hmm. What did he do? What did he do? He showed, he showed him. Because he knew who he was. Because think about this now. Thomas talking to Jesus. You just. Nah, think about that. The courage that he had to tell Jesus. Ah, unless I see it. I, I, you know. And know that, that he knows. Mm -hmm. So imagine when, when Jesus showed up and said touching. <laughs> just. I ain't really. No, I, I, I believe it. Touch it. Because he knows what? He knows the heart. You know, that's exactly what you meant. So when people say, hey, you don't question God, no. Who said that? You said that or did God say that? You want to be in position with God so you do ask him. Hmm. And he will. He say, God will give wisdom freely. That's it. And part of being in position, all of that encompasses being in position. You're in tune. You're sensitive to the spirit. All of that when you're in position. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus told him, he said, and blessed are those who don't see. That's right. See. But it was after he. That's right. Because he understood he that faith. Because this, this is about, it we're transitioning into faith. So faith is what? Like you said, not seeing. The evidence of things not seen. So blessed are those that's, that, that haven't seen, but they're going to believe. They're going to have faith and know that this is, is exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. what, what God has purpose, everything. See, and that's why when you, when you, because when you study the word of God, faith, this faith comes by hearing, right? Hearing by the word of God. See, when you study the word of God and you start putting everything together, that increases your faith because now all of a sudden everything makes sense. You see, that's the way it works. So, um, we don't want to be guilty of being AWOL, absent without leave. 
out of the presence of God, out of the will of God. And even if we are, if you are guilty of that, then your job is to, you must repent. You must repent in order to right the wrong. Because if you don't repent, then nothing is going to change. And it's going to only get worse for you and you're going to end up losing your salvation. Mm -hmm. Because you did not repent. Because you want to be disobedient to God. Because here's the thing, nowadays, see, I made the, I'm, the word may be for Solange to go and do something. And Solana don't do it because Teresa is associated with her, connected with her. Teresa get the assignment to go do it and receive the blessing. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that what God has for me, it is for me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's for you if you're obedient. Yes. But if you're not obedient, his word will not return unto him void. That means that somebody else is going to go and accomplish what, 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 what that, that, that word was, mm -hmm. that assignment. There's always somebody in place. You understand that? So let us pray. Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you for all that you do. When nobody seems to care, it's like we've lost our minds. You take a look at the news, crime is at an all-time high.